Okay, so cell division mitosis. This is a shortcut, abbreviated, very few words explanation of mitosis. There are four phases of mitosis. I'm also going to include the first diagram to include interphase. So I'm going to write in my stages across the top. Uh, let's do interphase. First stage of mitosis is prophase. Then we have metaphase. And we have anaphase. And then finally we have telophase. Okay, so I'm going to draw the cell, a round cell or a basic cell for each of these. I'm going to leave telophase for the time being. I'm now going to draw my nucleus. In fact, I'm going to draw these one at a time. So interphase, we have the nuclear. Obviously, it's a massive nucleus. I'm showing what's going on inside the nucleus. It looks a bit like a fried egg, but that's just the way that it is. OK, so during interphase, the DNA is all wrapped up and folded up in chromatin and bits and pieces like that. We can't see the chromosomes. So during interphase, as I drew on the last on the last diagram on that clock face, what happens during interphase that's relevant to cell division? Well, the most relevant thing is that DNA replicates. Now that's pretty damn important. You also uh, replicate the organelles. But they never ask you that. They're only going to ask you about DNA replicating. I'm going to draw a little tangent in a moment about what DNA looks like. But I'm going to continue with the diagram first because I think it's most important that you understand mitosis. Well, prophase, I'm now drawn my nuclear envelope as a dotted line. Now, why have I done that? Because during this phase of mitosis, the nuclear envelope breaks down. I'm going to talk about these little guys in a moment. So what happens during this stage of prophase? OK, so the chromosomes condense. They become short and fat and they become visible. So let's make these little bullet points because I'll fit them in better. Chromosomes condense. That basically means they get short and fat and become visible. So you might want to write that. Yeah, get short and fat. It means you can see them as an individual chromosome. The nuclear membrane breaks down, or you can call it the nuclear envelope. And then we can say the centrioles move to the pole. So these are centrioles. They look a little bit like how I drew nucleotides on DNA replication. That's just a convenience of how we draw them generally in biology. So the centrioles move to the poles. The poles just mean like the poles of the Earth, the North Pole, the South Pole, means opposite ends. So they are the three facts that you need to know about prophase. The chromosomes condense, the nuclear membrane breaks down, and the centrioles move to the poles. I'm going to draw the chromosomes in, but there's not a lot you need to know about them at this point. Now, how am I going to do this? I have four colors. I'm going to draw a thick blue one and a thin blue one. At this point, the chromosomes are double chromosomes. I'm going to explain why my issue with most of the textbooks when it comes to and I'm going to draw a thin red one and I'm going to draw a thick red one. Okay, so most of the time I'm now going to compare these two. If we could see the chromosomes here, which we can't because they haven't condensed yet, but if we could see the chromosomes here, I'm going to draw them down here so they don't confuse you, but we've, we still have the same chromosomes. We'd have a red one, a thin red one would have a thick red one and we'd have a thin blue one and a thick blue one but they wouldn't have this x shape generally speaking books demonstrate chromosomes as being this x shape they only look like this during mitosis which is the only time that you can see them which you can kind of understand why because that's how photographs would look however generally if we could represent these in a in a regular cell we'd have a thin short red one and we'd have a thick short red one. These are called homologous pairs. Let's not worry about that just yet. That's more important when we get to meiosis. And we'd have a long thin blue one and we'd have a long thick blue one. So th these would be the four chromosomes. There's four chromosomes here and there's four chromosomes here. The DNA is replicated and once it replicates we then have our thick black thick blue one, we have our thin blue one, we have our thick red one and we have our thin red one. So 
Chromosomes only look like this when they've duplicated themselves ready for division. So this confused me, certainly when I was studying genetics when I was at school, when I was at, doing my A-levels and uh, the first year of university, it confused the hell out of me. I didn't really understand genetics because of it. So I don't think people make enough emphasis of the fact that during normal cells, there's only, they don't have this X shape. It, it, they're just normal chromosomes. And in fact, most of the time they're all twisted up and in the chromatin like this. Okay, so this is a chromosome. I will do a little bit more on this. In fact, no, let's look at the structure of one of these double chromosomes. So A chromosome, if I draw one of these a little bit bigger, I'll choose blue. Yeah, so that is A chromosome. I use a phrase, I use a, a non-scientific, a non-recognized term for these guys. These obviously duplicate. And then we begin to draw them a little bit like this. And they get that famous X shape with something joining them together in the middle. Now. There's a few key terms that we need to know about these. In fact, I'm going to label, I'll put the arrows in black. And what else do we need to know? See, this is also called a chromosome. That is the technical name for it. I personally, in my notes, but you won't get credited for this on the exam, I call this a double chromosome. S chromo S O M E. That's a pretty bad spelling, but we get the idea. It's a not official word anyway, so don't use that in the exam. But I find that it's helpful to differentiate between these two. Now, this whole thing is a chromosome. One half of this, they're both identical. DNA has replicated. So this half is identical to this half, and we call these chromatids or sister chromatids. And then they're joined together by a centromere. Very similar to the centrioles. Centromere is in the middle of the chromosome. And the centrioles go to the poles of the cell. So repeat that to yourself a few times. Get it nice and clear. Make yourself a diagram. Make yourself a rhyme. Something that makes sense to you. Okay, so now we can go back to to cell division, mitosis. Well, our centrioles are still at the poles, and that's going to be the case whilst I've got my black pen out. I'm just going to cheat and put those there. Okay, the defining feature of metaphase to recognize the diagram is that the chromosomes, or the double chromosomes, if you're using my terminology, line up on the equator. So we use more geographical terminology for this. So we've got our thick blue one here. There's no particular order to this. I should be drawing my centromeres in there as well. Thin one, again. So they're all joined together by their centromeres. And then we also have something called the spindle that's beginning to form and it attaches to that centromere. Okay, so what are the defining features well, that you can say? I'm gonna put the double in because I find it useful. But again, you're not going to get marks for that on the exam, so don't say it. The double chromosomes line up on the equator. The spindle forms, and the spindle attaches to the centromeres. Okay, so, so far so good. Interphase, DNA replication, that's all you need to know. Prophase, the chromosomes condense and become visible, the nuclear membrane breaks down, and the centrioles move to the poles. Metaphase, characterized by this chromosomes or double chromosomes lining up on the equator, the spindle forming, and attaching to the centromeres. Anaphase, now what happens in anaphase is that the, the centromeres split, and each half, which is identical, gets pulled to opposite ends, and they're very spaghetti-like, they're very loose, so they, when they get dragged, they get dragged by their centromere and the other, the tail ends dr trail behind it and they get dragged. So they look like V's oh, pointing towards the centriole. So the spindle's pulling them in, winding them in, like reeling in a fish. Imagine reeling in a 
piece of cooked spaghetti by its center, well, you'd end up with the other bits trailing behind, and that's why we have this V-shape. So, what can we say? The centromere split, and we can say the chromatids are pulled to opposite poles. And that's what you need to know about anaphase. The defining feature to recognize is these V-shaped pulled in sections of the chromatids. Now the diagrams are the photographs that they give you in the exam are terrible, usually terrible. You have to find these details in awful, awful photographs. So look hard, look for one of the two defining, defining features. Okay, so then telophase, that's why I left this one to the end, it looks a bit like a double fried egg when you've put two eggs in the pan and they've merged together and we've got our nucleus back. So defining feature, the nuclear membrane reforms and cytokinesis, which is when the cytoplasm divides. Okay, so what would we have in terms of our DNA inside this cell? Well, we've got one thick blue one in here and one thick blue one in here. We also have one skinny blue one in here and one skinny blue one in here. We have one skinny red one up here, skinny red one up here, and then one th thick red one here and thick red one here. So if we look back over here to what we had in our original cell, one, 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 it's all the same. So we're back to where we started. They are genetically identical to their mother cell. As I said, these diagrams in the exam are horrendous. They don't really look anything like it. But what you're looking for is the defining feature, telophase, pretty easy to spot on the whole because the cytoplasm is splitting. Anaphase, you're looking for these V shapes. Metaphase, you're looking for them lined up down the middle. It could be this way, it could be horizontally the other way. You don't know which, but it will be one of the two. Prophase, you're looking, they probably won't ask you to identify this. You might be able to, if they ask you to spot all four, then you can use deduction to work out that it's not these three and this one is prophase, but this one is pretty tough to spot. The, cro the chromosomes have condensed. And interphase, is again, it would be a process of elimination, very difficult to spot, maybe because the nuclear membrane is formed, but there's not no cytokinesis. So key terms on this page, I have been ignoring my colors a little bit, I've been a bit concentrating elsewhere. Cytokinesis, chromatids and centromeres, definitely. Um, let's underline these. The chromos uh, centromeres split, the chromatids are pulled apart. And centrioles move to the poles. That's mitosis.